So what was the thinking at coordinator and going and so I know three, four, four, three is kind of been blurred over the years, but the, the schematic change there. Yeah, so I mean, certainly anytime you make a change of that magnitude, um, there's a lot of thought and deliberation that goes into that. And uh, you guys know how I feel about Joe Barry, and I'm so thankful for our time together. And uh, I got so much respect for him as a man, as a coach, and what he was able to do for us. Um, and those are tough decisions. And but I think as as a head football coach, sometimes you got to make some tough decisions and in terms of what you think you need to do moving forward to put your team in the best possible position. And um, I felt like, you know, we interviewed a lot of candidates and a lot of those guys actually went on and got coordinator jobs and just felt really good about what Jeff Halfley is going to bring to us in terms of his ability to lead, his ability to connect. Um, Certainly, I've always had respect for, for him from afar as a football coach. Uh, he's worked with my brother in, at two different stops. He's worked with Kyle Shanahan at two different stops in Cleveland and San Francisco. And I know how those guys, um, how much respect they have for, for, for him um, as a person first and a coach second. But uh, just really excited what, what he's going to bring. Uh, certainly, it will be a different scheme. Um, but I think it's one that I think it will be easy to ad adjust to with, with the personnel that we have. That was something that certainly was at the forefront of my mind when we were going through this is uh, you better make sure the, the pieces that we have in-house are capable of, of doing what uh, he's going to expect of them. And I think we have that in-house. I think anytime you have good players, uh, they should be able to adapt to most schemes. So felt comfortable with that. and. Uh, like I said, it was it was a good process. You get get to meet a lot of different people throughout the process, and um, definitely interviewed some some really good football coaches. Matt, what do you want your defense to be? I want us to be fast and physical, and attack the ball. And um, we will be a little bit more vision based on the back end, and um, I think that's that's great opportunity to uh, be able to go out there and generate takeaways. Specifically, you liked about Jeff's defenses in the college ranks, or maybe what he had done in the secondary in the NFL. Yeah, I think he's just—he's got a way to make it very easy for our players, so they can can go out there and let their natural ability take over. And um, we're kind of working through some of the schematics right now. I've uh, been a part of some of those meetings, and you know, I, I definitely like the vibe. I think we've—it's—it's it's never about one person. You better have. The collective, the the people that are we we've, we've surrounded him with. Um, there's a lot of good football coaches and guys that are coming from different schemes and different systems. But I do believe that if you have the right kind of people, the right teachers, um, you know they're going to get the most out of our players, whether they've you know coached in the scheme or not. Obviously, he's coached at the NFL level on defense. But what do you think he gained in his time as a head coach? Well, it's, we've had a lot of those conversations, and I think one, one benefit, I would say, um, from my perspective, is he's sat in the same seat. And so uh, it's good for us to be able to bounce ideas off each other. He's going to be somebody that, that I certainly lean on, and not necessarily in, in what we're doing defensively. Um, you know, I think, I think he's just got great perspective of what – being a head coach entails, and I know it's not, uh, you know, we're going into, what, year six now? It's hard to believe, but uh, year six. But you can always use people to bounce ideas off of, um, you know, and especially somebody who's sat in that seat. Matt, does it also, I understand you're the head coach and you coach the entire team, but your offensive background and him having been a head coach, does it allow him to maybe be a little bit of the head coach of the defense and you don't have to, necessarily feel like you have to get us involved if you want to you can but you don't have to you know I, I would say that it, whether you're working for an offensive head coach or you're an offensive coordinator working for a defensive head coach that kind of happens naturally um, and certainly you're always a part of the process but um, you hire people for a reason and quite frankly I feel like the same um, 
way about our position coaches. You're the head coach of that position, and it's your responsibility, and um, it's my responsibility ultimately, but still, there, there's got to be ownership across the board. From his former players, I've heard the same word you used to describe what he does for them. He makes it easy. As a coach, how hard is it to make it easy for your guys? And to have people say that from a lot of different backgrounds, it seems like it's something he's done everywhere. I think it's very easy to make it hard on our players, <laughs> quite frankly, because as coaches, we want to we want to be able to get up there and talk, and sometimes we can over-talk things, but ultimately it comes back down to the player. We're not out on the field playing, so how can we try to put them in the best position possible and, and make it easy for them to go out there and execute the vision that we have for them? What does that mean, make it easy? How do you, how do, you do that? Like, what Specifically, what are it? they could do well just um that, that's a great question pete in terms of it's you've heard the term paralysis by analysis sometimes you give guys too much information and they're, they're looking at too many things and it's how do you get it into a singular focus so that they can go out there and, and play at a high level and play fast and play without hesitation um so how can you give them it's because I do believe there's a fine line because you, you want to give them as much information as they can handle. But I think part of that is knowing your personnel. Some guys can handle more than others. And so you've got to get to know your players and, and try to figure out how much they can do and how much they can handle. And I think that was when you look at our team, um, especially this year, I think that was part of our issue early on, uh, early in the season when we were struggling um, more, more. I would say from an offensive standpoint is we were still learning a lot of our guys and, and what they could handle and what was too much. And um, we found that sweet spot and that allowed us to go out there and, and execute at a higher level. What are you looking for for vision based like out of your safeties? And is the fact that Jeff spent so much time as a secondary coach, was that appealing to you to run your defense? Yeah, I would say definitely. Um, I think, especially in this league, it's such a pass-dominant league. Um, that was a, definitely one of the most appealing things to me is, was his ability to lead from the back end. Um, but I, th I think he's got a great knowledge base at, on all three levels. What was, was the other thing, yes? Vision-based. You're talking about you want to play that are fast, physical, and vision-based on the back end. Well, yeah, I would say more vision-based more visual on the quarterback because he's going to ultimately take you to where the ball is going to go. So, and it's hard to do that when, if you're playing with your back to the quarterback or if you're playing a real matchy, not to, not to say that you, we won't be that. Um, there's certainly going to be circumstances when you want to man up and play some match coverage. But, um, you know, I would say a, a big part of what we're going to do, especially from a coverage standpoint, is going to be have vision on the quarterback. I think one of the first weeks of the season, you had three receivers on the injury report with hamstrings, and you said we'll take a deep dive into all that after the season. What did that deeper look uh, result in, and why did you think a change was needed for that strength and conditioning staff? Again, you got to make some tough decisions. Um, and I, I mean, I think Giz is an outstanding strength coach, and I, I, don't, I don't want that to be like, oh, it's all the strength department's problem. That, that was not what it, what it was. And quite frankly, that's not what I believe. And I don't think that's what we found out either. So it was just one of those deals where I felt like uh, some new leadership in that position could be beneficial to us. And again, found a guy, Aaron Hill, um, coming from San Francisco, ironically enough, uh, that I think they're doing some pretty cool things out there. Um, I've got a pretty, obviously you guys know, I've got a close relationship with Kyle, but also with, with the head strength coach there, Dustin Perry, um, who may or may not be my wife's first cousin, but, um, so I had a lot of conversations with him, you know, when we decided to make the change, uh, just kind of asking for advice in terms of looking for people, uh, again, interviewed a bunch of guys. Uh, there's some really good strength coaches out there and, um, but ultimately, you know, he, he, I thought Aaron did an outstanding job in the interview process and it wasn't something that just, I was involved in that and that, you know, I had all our, 
our special teams coaches were a part of that process. Um, certainly Flea and Nate were a part of it. Uh, we had a couple of other guys in there as well. Uh, I just think it was important that we were all on, this, on board with this just in, in order to get the collaboration, the cooperation, because a lot of people touch our athletes. And at the end of the day, when you're talking about a performance staff, you, you need everybody in alignment. And so the communication's got to be on point. And um, we just came to a consensus on, on picking Aaron for that spot. You're dealing with these professional athletes, but do you expect that position to be a, a motivator? guy who's you know, really got relationships with these players? Well, I think, yeah, absolutely. That's, that, is, that is an expectation I have. Um, I think if you want your players to bring great energy every day, if you don't do it as a coach, then there's, there's a problem there. I can't demand that out of our guys and not expect that out of myself or our coaches, and no matter what you're coaching. So, um, yeah, the energy is an important piece to that. But you said it. Um, in terms of, I do think the relationships are where anything starts in this business, whether it's myself to our staff um, and our staff to our players and players to players. And the more we can get to know one another, and the, I think the, the trust builds. And when you get trust, you get guys fighting for one another. And there's a genuine care and love for one another. That's, that's when you're going to get people at their best. Uh, Sean Mannion's title, and, and what do you think he can bring uh, to that room, to the offense, as, as a guy who is a, a recent player? He's going to be an offense of assistant for us, um, and he'll be working primarily out of the quarterback room. Um, so I, I, I just I love his past experience. I've coached him before in L.A. Um, I always figured he was going to go down this route. Matter of fact, when we played him earlier in the year, um, he told me he was going to get into coaching. So I was like, all right, well, let me know when you're going to become a coach. He's just a guy that I've always uh, respected how he went about his process, uh, how he prepared for games, how he helped, you know, Jared in that situation, being a backup for us. Um, then when we interviewed him, matter of fact, he was getting ready to go interview for Chicago. And um, I think it was, it was actually during the NFC Championship game which I really didn't care to watch. Um, I jumped on a Zoom call with him in the second half, and he showed me his what he was going to present. And I told him, well, that's pretty good. I think you should come up to Green Bay right when you're done with that interview. And uh, I'm, I'm surprised that they let him out of the building. But uh, they tried to get him, but I, I guess we had more to offer. But uh, we're lucky to have him. I, I really do think this guy's going to have a, a bright future for us. Um, and, and certainly in, in the coaching profession. Matt, did you enter into this with the D coordinator thinking 4-3 might be the switch, or was that more of Jeff and his philosophy and what you Yeah, I just I wanted to get who I thought was the best for us, um, and that's not to discredit anybody else. It was just every situation's a little bit different. I, I equate putting a coaching staff together. It's like putting a puzzle together, and, and how does each piece fit? And that's an important part of it is the fit. And he just happens to run more of a 4-3. And, uh, you know, that's – and I felt – but I felt comfortable with, again, what we had. Because the last thing you want to do is just scrap everything that you, which, which you got going for you, especially when you have some pretty good players that have performed at a high level and guys under contract and all this. And, um, you know, Goody was a part of the process when – when we were interviewing these guys, I certainly wanted to make him feel on board with it. And, um, you know, he was pretty comfortable with it. So we went out and got Halfley. You faced the uh, 49ers defense <coughs> many times, Jets as well. What is it that made you think or, or that you thought was so difficult about playing that style? I'm assuming in the Halfley's. Very much influenced. As an offensive guy, I feel like we can poke holes in every scheme. And I really do believe that. Uh, there's going to be a weakness to every scheme. But so, so to me, when, when I look at and think about great defenses in this league, it, it's a style of play. It's how do these guys attack the football? How do they approach the ball carrier? Um, and how relentless are they playing each and every play? 
the effort that they give. And um, that is definitely a staple of that defense. You, you know, whether it's San Francisco, whether it's the Jets, watched a lot of Houston over the last few days. And I mean, they are relentless. Um, it's just, it, it comes down to style of play. Go ahead, Bill. You go. Oh, you forgot. <laughs> so you, you, you interview Joe position coach from whatever team for the coordinator position. It's easy to say, they, this is what they ran. This is going to work here. So how do you do that with a college guy? I mean, the game is just so totally different. How do you know that what he's doing there is going to translate to what you want to do? I think it's more similar than you'd think. And I think nowadays, especially with um, just a lot of the things that are happening in college football, you're finding them at the NFL level. Now, there are some dif differences in terms of the rules, which is great for, for uh, Halfley. He doesn't have to deal with some of these unbalanced formations where you got eligibles covered up and other guys off the line. So I would say that our game, from a rules standpoint, might, might be easier. Yeah, the dimensions of the field, uh, certainly uh, some of the skill sets of, of some of the players, but... Um, you know, he's done a great job wherever he's been, whether it was at, with the Niners uh, as, as a secondary coach, whether it was um, at Ohio State or at Boston College. I thought he's always been able to maximize the capabilities of his players. Jason, last one. I remember it now. Um, you talked about the coaching staff being a puzzle. I know you haven't announced the full staff, but it's not just Jeff that's going to be new on the defensive side of the ball. With how much you've talked about the importance of chemistry on your staff, what is that process going to be like with that many new faces now for you? Yeah, that was that was a uh, interesting process to kind of go through. Again, interviewed a lot of guys. Certainly, um, Halfley was a big part of the the process in in terms of getting the right staff around him, uh, guys that he not necessarily knew, but guys that he he respected, um, that he trusts are gonna be able to help carry out the vision for the defense. Um, and I'm, I'm excited for you guys get to, to get to know these guys. I think you'll see uh, a lot of high energy coaches and I think that'll help our players bring out that energy that we need to go out there and compete at the best of our ability on Sunday.